Hey guys, what's going on? So I wanted to put out this quick video addressing some of the overheating concerns regarding the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. Particularly, Android Authority published a video drawing attention to this matter. But I feel this situation is really overblown or rather misinterpreted. Android Authority says that we've tested three Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 phones and they all have a quote unquote heat problem. Our OnePlus 15 review units shut down from overheating during a stress test. Remember, stress test. And we have data that other new phones from Realme and Red Magic are also getting incredibly hot or are forced to throttle performance drastically just to stay cool. This data doesn't look great for Qualcomm and raises big questions for the entire Android industry. Well, Firstly, let's not single out Qualcomm and Android. The MediaTek Dimensity 9500 and the Apple A19 Pro also throttle hard in the same stress test. But isn't that obvious? The stress test in question is the 3D Mark Wildlife and Wildlife Extreme benchmark. In this benchmark, complex 3D graphics and lighting is rendered at either native 2560 by 1440 or 3840 by 2160 aka 4K resolution. Again, native 2K or 4K resolution. No dynamic resolution tricks here. Imagine running a benchmark like this on your desktop with a heatsink the size of an Arduino Nano and no fans. Yeah, good luck with that. So imagine running the same on a super tiny dense SoC which itself is inside a slim densely packed device completely relying on whatever little passive cooling is available. So obviously these devices whether it is from Qualcomm or from MediaTek or from Apple will absolutely throttle in a benchmark like 3 Mark, where it's rendering the scene at native 4K with an uncapped frame rate. The typical game that you download from the Play Store will either be capped to 30 FPS from the beginning with dynamic resolution if the game is super GPU heavy or they will run at some low internal resolution like 720p. So let's be clear, these are clearly desktop grade chips at this point. My 8 Elite powered 6.3 inch small Xiaomi 15 can emulate GTA 5 at 100 FPS. These chips and any flagship chip in the future are clearly limited by the current thermal management systems deployed in these phones. The ADLE Gen 5 on my OnePlus 15 can pull up to 18 watts of power and so obviously it cannot sustain this for over 20 minutes. In fact, no other phone can. These devices are clearly limited by physics at this point. Red Magic with its insane cooling design can sustain up to like 22 watts for some time while emulating a literal PS4 title like God of War. Now regarding the OnePlus 15 failing to complete the benchmark, this is something that totally depends on the OEM's power and thermal curve. I was able to get a successful stress test run on the OnePlus 15 in high performance mode and you can see that OnePlus is trying to minimize throttling as much as possible. Unlike the Find X9 Pro or the Vivo X300 Pro or the iPhone, you can see the OnePlus's performance in the 20th minute is better than the iPhone's performance in just the second minute. In fact, the OnePlus 15 somehow managed to sustain over 10 watt throughout the test for 20 minutes. This means you are totally fine in typical games where even the most hardcore game will push like 7.5 watts of power. The takeaway from the stress test result is that OnePlus is staying true to its motto of positioning the OnePlus 15 as a gaming oriented phone, just like Red Magic, trying to minimize throttling as long as possible and in doing so the phone may crash during an unreasonable benchmark like this. But what's important is to see at what point does the benchmark crash and what was the power pull at that point. Using an application like Scene helps in this case because 3D Mark won't return a result at all if the application is force closed. I feel 3D Mark should at least log the performance in successfully completed runs, but whatever. Anyways, the point is OnePlus at the moment is not afraid to put performance at the top priority. And what this means is in regular games, you will be totally fine. This also means that when you are doing something incredibly demanding, you are confident that the phone is performing as well as it can 
by not compromising on power which means if you add a cooler to aid the heat dissipations you are going to have an incredibly high level of sustained performance in fact in my custom configuration grid legends test where i make internal changes like up the frame rate cap to 120 fps disable dynamic resolution and all to make the game incredibly demanding the OnePlus 15 was able to sustain nearly 11 watt of power for 10 minutes before crashing. This gives me confidence that I can enjoy heavy workloads easily with a cooler or if I remove my mods I can enjoy the vanilla game for hours since it would use like less than half the power. Another point that Android Authority mentioned was Sure, it might be able to hit Qualcomm's claimed performance numbers but it can't hold on to them for very long without some sort of advanced cooling system to keep the phone from turning into a furnace. This makes Qualcomm's claims of being the fastest mobile chip a little shaky because if you can't actually see those numbers on your real phone, do they really matter? Well, yes, that does matter. Because like I mentioned, if your OEM is not afraid to push the chip, you can be rest assured that when you add an active cooler, you can enjoy those claimed peak performance numbers for a reasonably long time. But what's more important is, since Qualcomm and other SOC designers keep pushing that peak performance every year, what happens is that the mid-level performance is greatly improved, aka typical mid-range performance efficiency is improved. For example, the Snapdragon 8 Elite first generation was a huge improvement for mid-level efficiency compared to the 8 Gen 3. So the 8 Elite can do the same work but with like 30 to 50% lower power. Yes, the 8 Elite Gen 5 isn't a massive improvement over the original 8 Elite when it comes to mid-range efficiency but it is still a reasonable improvement. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I've always had this pet peeve with the 3 d Mark benchmark and how people interpret it. It's really about judging the OEM's tuning philosophy rather than the chip itself. You can make a 12mm thick phone and ace this benchmark but people want slim phones. This is holding back flagship chips from performing at their peak. The industry needs major innovation in the field of thermal management going forward. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Make sure to hit like, share and subscribe and share your thoughts down below. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.